from the groin injury, had 21 points. UMass last time out, Bruiser Flint, their head coach, saw his team take two days to win by 18. The game took two days because the lights went out with seven and a half left in the second half. It was a blizzard, uh, not exactly a blizzard, but a heavy, wet snowstorm in New England. Power went out on the campus. They couldn't get the lights back on. So Padilla, Travieso, and company had to come back on Sunday to beat Wyoming. And as we start here tonight, although it probably looks okay to you at home, there are some lights in the arena that seem not to be on. So it's a little darker than normal, probably over as you look to your right on the television. It'll be a little darker over by the UMass fence. Oh, you've had a tough weekend yourself. We've lost some power at, at home. It's been tough all throughout New England. You Heavy wet snow early you, in the year. You never had much power at home. <laughs> Thank you. Phil. I know that. <laughs> UMass is in the white uniforms. Fresno the dark. Hetner wins the tip. Padilla with the ball. Fresno State, man to man. Travieso and Padilla. Karen and Travieso. Fresno will play good and tough defense. And Mass has to get back. Nice job deflecting. Dominic Young had the ball knocked away from him. You got to get back, be big, put the hands up. Nice job. Cleaning something off the floor. You get a look at Damon Forney. A groin injury for Forney that kept him out of most of the early part of the season. Missed four of their first six games. It was so severe that they consulted with the 49ers of San Francisco, the NFL team, as they treat Steve Young's groin injury. And they apparently found it was a cyst as well. So, I mean, it was a very difficult time starting to play a little bit and getting practice. Some problem that Tark's had. UMass, in a man. First try down low. Rasan Smith can't get it to go. And Ajmal Fassett aggressively pulls away the rebound. Padilla, crossover on Young. And that's an intentional foul on Ajmal Fassett to just try to grab Forney as he was breaking for the hoop. Well, Ajmal out of St. Anthony's uh, played a lot with Rashawn McLeod this summer. Of course, Rashawn playing very well for Mike Krzyzewski at Duke. And in this White Eagle Hall that they work out, that would not be called a foul. <laughs> so Ajmal forgot where he was at the Mullen Center or in Jersey City. He forgot there were stripes and whistles <laughs> present. Mike Kitts, Gary Donnie, and John Moreau. The officials tonight. Bob Hurley is not frugal, but uh, it would ruin a good run to have three officials <laughs> watching his talented performers go at one another. Forney, a 50% free throw shooter. Back is the starter at the power forward, the four position with his help. Misses the two free throws, but since it was an intentional foul, Fresno gets the ball back where the foul happened. Hey, talk about Forney. He played for Murray Arnold at Okaloosa Walton Junior College. How about that now? Say that again quickly. No. And order dinner. We'll leave it for you. Murray, terrific coach at Western Kentucky, been all over. That's the math as a youngster, and they won the title. Watched by Padilla. First shot for the Massachusetts native is a three. Mostly Chris Heron being booed tonight as he returns to Massachusetts, but uh, some of his family members on hand cheer and laugh. Yeah, as long as they don't boo. Kepner throws up an air ball. UMass struggling to get good looks. Thrown away by Fresno's Dominic Young. Yeah, that was not a real good look uh, in the open floor. Uh, Robertson gambling a little bit, but one thing about Chris Heron. To give you everything. I look for big game for him tonight. The fans were on him a little bit the last game, the Oregon game. Chanting his name. Kind of got him ready for what he's going to see here. Fassett missed the follow by Babel and Roberson, who made the turnover last time, hit the deck hard and is uh, slow to get up. And Babel, one of those young guys that's quick and can leap. Chris Kirkland, another for UMass. The reaction there is Osmal gets a little strong with the release, but he can elevate, and you saw that tough little crash for Roberson. He stays in the game. Game that Fresno leads by one here in our first 90 seconds. Smith puts it on the floor. The big fellow will go to the line. Not too bad. Strong to the 10, huh? And Larry Kettner there shows a little bit of that freshman influence, not poise or newcomer influence, I should say. In position to defend all the way going forward, and Rashawn, who's not known for deep shooter, able to get it to the goal. Smith will go to the line. He's uh, at his third college. Merritt Junior College, Fresno City College, and now here at Fresno. 
Well, everybody over the years has called Jerry the Father Flanagan in a way, and he believes from his youthful days and youthful exuberance, he always got in trouble and has been able now to attract kids. They're calling him. I mean, I've been called a lot of things, but they're calling him to come and play. He, uh, Spain atmosphere to remain close to Andre Jones, and you probably talked to him about Lincoln Walton, a great kid who left the Syracuse, now going there, and fun to go. Going to enroll in a couple of weeks, in classy there. I think the ball went in on its own. Don't know if it was tipped by Larry Kettner, who had his hand up there. I'll give it to the Philly guy. What do you think? <laughs> It was Kettner. Ah, oh, you're right. Kettner did get his hand on it. First goal of the game for the sophomore. All tied at four. Slow starting offensively. Roberson goes around Babel. But Kettner was there to play some nice defense and get the rebound. Armelo Trappi finds Osmal Bassett. And he did the right thing. Osmal. Bruiser. Bruiser's going to calm him down. Now, Osmal, you just made it to. It's not the winning basket at the NCAA, <laughs> and Bruiser was talking about that today. Part of being a freshman and playing Bruiser ball, right here, Larry up in good position. Osmal had a nice little soft touch, makes it tippable. And the other end, the Tark loves to take it on the dribble. Right here, coming up short, the ability to turn it the other way, something both schools do so well. What's not guarded? The rim. You got to get back and play the center of the floor and then disperse. Not good defense by the Tarks, guys. Here's what they've done with uh, Georgetown and Wyoming their last two games. Kettner and Bassett, brand new to the starting lineup. And these are first-year players, and Bruiser Flint has seen his club in a very quick period of time have young guys forced to take starting roles, and they've responded to They saw those things. And he, as I noted, to freshman at Terebi, it's just you don't know what to expect from him. Young changed his mind thinking about shooting. He's going to get repeated by Herrick. Dominic Young, who hit 123s last year. Led the nation 4.1 per game. Mike, they do a great job at penetrating and looking deep on the floor for that three. Defense turns. Pass it back down low. As it knocked away, the arrow pointing to Fresno. The one thought that Bruiser had for Ajmal Bassett is to get stronger. Get in the weight room, and in the fall, he wasn't able to partake in the workouts until everything got straightened out for him. Terrence Roberson misfires. Damon Torney has his shot altered, but Fresno att attacking to the glass right away. Rasan Smith gets the hit. Well, some games the big guys for Fresno are nice little steal. He does that great. Young takes it away from Padilla. Babel is back, changed the shot, but picked up the foul. How he sets his man up in the open floor. When on the open, just talked about you want to play for Jerry, you got to guard out the perimeter. And Dominic Young can spin a guy, get in position, you think you're going by, and that's against Edgar Padilla. That doesn't happen too often. And here, I still don't understand why guys just don't go in and make the layup. They like to slow down and take the hit. But look at this, the penetration, and now everybody turns below the foul line. You can't recover the range and distance of Young. And a great look by Chris Howard. So Young has a couple of free throws. He makes his first. He'll have one more. There you see Tyrone Weeks, who we mentioned at the top of the broadcast. First action in three games since the ankle injury. Eight down or seven, eight days ago. Today. In practice before the direct TV grade eight. And a nice calming influence on this team. I know the guards are the leaders, but he's got a big impact verbally. They're quiet the backcourt. Fresno scored the last seven. Travieso missed. Chance to extend the run for Young and company. The explosion by Thorny. On the pressure of the push, you can't identify properly a quick 20 by Bruiser. And you've got to get back and get out on your people. Everybody's got to match up properly. And if it isn't your man, stay there. Don't leave Forney alone right here. Nobody steps up, and obviously, with intelligence, they don't get the way underneath either. They don't want to get that bang. As you watch Jerry Sartanian's 5-1 and one team on tape, uh, this is a top 25 team. Fresno State hasn't been in the uh, top 25 nationally since 1984. This is a team that is not the tar teams that people are used to seeing at UNLV. Not yet, anyway. Well, he doesn't feel they're working as hard as they're capable of, and until they get that ethic, and Chris Hart is one of those guys he's turned into a dedicated individual since October, has taken great care of himself, lost the weight, the body fat. 
Off the ball, a foul in the post on Forney. It was battling with Tyrone Weeks. Now, you had some notes regarding his diet. I mean, he was into salads and things that you generally buy when you're paying. Me? <laughs> Heron has really tried, as you mentioned. Uh, he and the, some of the other players have talked about staying away from alcohol during the season, trying to keep their bodies clean, focusing on basketball. Weeks with the basketball in his hands for the first time in a couple of games. Good communication. Winston Smith started early in the year. Another one of those freshmen of renown. So odd to see UMass be deep and young. And who's five first-year players on this team? That's part of their growth problem. These guys aren't young, though, in the backcourt. Padilla couldn't take Young. Smith inside had it blocked by 40. Young leads a three-on-one. Heron finishes. Well, you knew that before he released it, huh? And they get out and explode. Right now, you best not get back properly. An 11-0 run for Fresno. The Kettner ends. The sophomore from Roman Catholic out of Philadelphia has half of UMass's eight. This is the end of having some problems containing the dribble and staying at home on the shooter to carry them. Aaron tried to spin through the lane. Official timeout. UMass trying to find itself against an experienced Fresno State team right now trailing by seven. That isn't the last State game. leading UMass, the young Minuteman fan, unhappy at this point, down seven, doubleheader again tomorrow night. Michigan St. John's at Madison Square Garden, tractor trailer, coming off the big win for Michigan at Duke, followed by number one Kansas at home in Lawrence, taking on George Washington. GW, of course, tough week, lost to Maryland, lost to Texas Tech, doubleheader tomorrow. You'll be at Nassau Coliseum for that first Yes, game, right? I'm looking forward to it, but uh, this one tonight, a long way to go, but I think UMass is guards have to value the ball and also stay at home on the other end. McCullough now in, matched up. They get a little small change on Dominic Young. You see Chris Heron, uh, reason that uh, he's on the bench, took a shot in the nose uh, as he tried to make that last goal. Uh, judging by, by meeting him and knowing about his past, I think that has happened before. On occasion, and maybe not on the basketball floor either. The tough guy from a tough town, Fall River Mountain. Kinder has his shot thrown out of there by Fortney. Travieso takes it right back in. A lot of red shirts, and one of them knocked it out of bounds. Say, that one was close. I mean, uh, good patience by the officials. The big fellas are climbing on top of the tin. Nothing real easy. You think you got an easy one right here? You turn? Well, in practice, you might get away with it. But on the way down, I think. Yeah, tough on the call. Smith inside. Kender the follow. Boy, Larry Kender. Clean it all up. The big fella. Six already. Well, Kender had to sit out last year to become academically eligible. Now, you're going to have to put a body on him with the other right now. Those fellas. They're not paying attention to Larry. Smith fouls McCullough, holding him outside. Winston Smith, the freshman, picks up his first person. Now, the guards can get some things for you, Mass, if the big guys kick it back out after all that action. You'll make your quick move. You don't have it. I think if you reverse the ball, because they overreact defensively, which is great defense. You know, you want to jam in and help out. There's the third of the great three guards, Kendrick Brooks. Averages 14 a game, his first two. And Edgar Bent. Travieso tries to make them pay on the other end, and Carmelo is on the scoreboard. Nice job by Padilla giving it up, and a nice kiss by Carmelo. For three tees, boy, these guys have no hesitation to shoot. Were you going to say no conscience? <laughs> I was thinking about it. Because <laughs> well, that's easy. Clark, if you guard, uh, you've got that option at the other end. There's no such thing as amber or red. It's all green. <laughs> Fresno's hit all three of their threes, and UMass has to be careful here not to get into a scoring contest, because that's Fresno's game. Pretty young. Nice to be in short. Weeks find Smith. And that's exactly what you got to do. Be patient when you get it, because everybody looks to jam down and assist. First goal of the game for Smith, a six-point. Fresno State lead. East meets West, and Young off on the three. Well, you take those long ones by Young, you can get old, too. Weeks a little bump to free Padilla. And McCullough, the rebound for Fresno. 
Much better job by UMass now, except look, all of a sudden, Horny gets behind. Now, everybody was back, but it wasn't their man, so they just step up. You gotta play them until the big guys get back. That's not good defense. This is the area that I think UMass can do something. The overreaction is going to free some people up. You just have that poise on their fire. You got to see things slowly against Tark Skies. Weeks in the front court now need to get their act a little tighter because Larry Kettner's on the bench. He picked up his second personal foul. And he puts a lot of pressure on Weeks. I know he's not able to play much. Fresno, as you see, drastically improved at the stripe this year. Already, they will, uh, after this set, have eight free throw attempts tonight compared to none for UMass. Horny struggles a little bit for Tark. How many years, huh? How much success? National championship. 83% of the games he coaches, he wins. The only guy close. It's not me, by the way. If you're coaching, uh, yeah, no. I was actually going to yeah. ask your percentage, but <laughs> that was something ruined my night. Claire B., former LIU coach and writer, the guy that had a great influence on Bob Knight, Claire B. Forney made his first of four free throw attempts. Charlton Clark, the third guard off the UMass bench, gets on the board. The sophomore out of St. Raymond's in the Bronx. Foot is healthy. Playing better. Coming off his career best game. Away from the ball. Offensive foul on Fresno and Kendrick Brooks. And you mentioned Clark. He was involved in that. 22 points the last ball game. Bruiser's gotten him to penetrate and go to the goal. He said that's his game. Don't be selling for the deep three. John Robick, longtime assistant to John Calafari alongside there. They break down the tape. I was teasing about all the set plays they came up for for Fresno. I said, come on, Clark didn't concentrate on set plays. Clark got out of the double. Weeks down low, got his man in the air. Enos Norville the rebound. Weeks again, but softer. Norville cleaned it up on the other side, kept it alive. UMass gets a little bigger, eight offensive rebounds. Let the four field goals and the crowd back into it now as Heron is back in the game as well. Wow, is that a quick release. Brooks missed. Serdenga stopped inside and a foul on the Minutemen. Now that's as quick as you get. I mean, uh, <laughs> tell Curry <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah, did he, that's right. Did he have a piece of that one? Oh. Uh, they have a habit of driving in and then kicking it out. But Weeks, we mentioned the ability to lead. I mean, he's a very tough competitor. He's verbal. He works hard. And incidentally, Candy has a uh, internet show. And he's on, on the it, internet, he's a web page. Yeah, I'm sure you do too. You're so <laughs> big. But on it, he, he was asked a lot of questions about his preferences. And he said that there are three guys on UMass he feels to make the NBA. The guards and Tyrone. Really? And now, I, I know friendship goes a long way in that remark. <laughs> But he may have seen some things playing against them. I think he's got to get a little trimmer, would you say? Maybe yeah. a little quicker, but he is not playing it. Pass to the wrong hand, not reach his ball. Garrett Kerdenga comes up with a steal. Kari Stanley hit the last two free throws, keeps it alive for Fresno. The danger first thought about the quick shot, forced the defense, and an offensive foul on Fresno State and Darnell McCullough. Herron looks quick, though, doesn't he? Push the ball, get him involved. They're all quick. Defending and shooting. Fresno out to a quick lead by five. The 280 horsepower Lincoln Mark 8. Came Tagamet, then Zantac, then Pepsid, but the newest, Axid. Now in non-prescription strength as new Axid AR. A medicine so effective for many, Axid AR can prevent heartburn completely. New Axid AR. The Panasonic Razor. Shave wet or shave dry. Your choice. Your shave. Rinse clean. Work hard. Play hard. Shave your way. Panasonic. 
Let's go, guys. I need a play down here. Hang on, Mike. We're working on something up here. I tried three wide rocket. Mm -hmm. If they blitz, it won't work. What about a quick slam? Okay, Mike, we're almost there. Come on, come on, come on. Look at Pro Split Z out. What's taking so long up there? Okay, Mike, here we go. Three wide, 78, Z out, Y cross. All right, all set. Let's go, let's go. Good call, guys. Good job. They didn't communicate with us uh, the way they should. Uh, the young guys sometimes have to be guided out there on the court, and they weren't doing it uh, during the game situation. So we talked about it. Uh, that's what they played well against Wyoming. Uh, and we talked about the communication, and I hope uh, this carries over from game to game from now on. 30-year-old Bruiser Flint talking about his experienced backcourt that actually needed the most coaching out of this group in the early going. Now, early on, uh, they started to rely on the deep shots, uh, forgot to integrate the other people into the offense. But Bruiser, a coach since he's a young guy, his dad had him coach a development team in the Sunny Hill League years ago. His dad's here tonight, by the way, as Weeks, uh, I think, clears out Terdenga. The offensive foul on Tyrone will be his first. Garrett Terdenga, the sophomore from Germany, at 6'10", adds some size to this Fresno team. Size is something they have to play. They, they can play a lot of different books. Uh, Clark is looking for the one and one after what is the seventh team foul. I think they're straightening out who the foul was on, whether it was on Tyrone Weeks or... Now, Terdenga, incidentally, I was talking to Tark before the game. He's a terrific post defender. And if you watch international basketball, most teams opt for a little bit of zone, or if they go to man-to-man, -man, they may not be as aggressive. This guy fronts three quarters, he's very competitive, and he's got a deep touch, too. A real solid contributor to Price Night. Garrett Terdenga, 6'10", 215 pounds. Looks like he's had a little bit more weight since then, but as you see, physical nature of Fresno has been the story thus far. UMass has not even smelled the free throw line. One thing, Tark, uh, this team has yet to put in their full court pressure. They haven't done the amoeba, his famous little extended right. zone. And all of that is to come. I, I think just like UMass, late they are, they are going to be much better as a basketball team. Work habits, something he questioned uh, three hours yesterday. I mean, I was tired. Up here as they are on this 10-game road trip. They're away from home for a month. They go back at the end of this week for final exams. Then hit the road again after Christmas. They go down to San Juan. Weeks on Terdenga. Tyrone again misfires. Here's Chris Herring. Back in the Commonwealth tonight. Back after bloody nose in the early going. Feeling no ill effects. Brawly but not battered, huh? Undeterred as he turns and squares up. Aaron has eight. Fresno leads by ten. Watch how hard they work on the dribble penetration. If you can turn the corner against Fresno, you've got some offense. But they do a great job of gaining position. See how right now gets square again? A nice little flare screen. Travieso misfired. Weeks the rebound. Smith inside tries to draw the contact. And finally did get a foul. Although the Fresno bench would disagree with you. Now, I love Tyrone's attitude. But now he's playing like he's got bruised thumbs, not bruised ankle. I mean, he's had some opportunities in there. I think the days off have hurt him on his offensive touch. I mean, competitive, but his releases are rather harsh at this point. Do you really lose? I mean, if you don't go through when you're going every day since October 15th, shooting and touch, if you don't do it for a couple of days, is, is it tough to get back in it? Well, Ricky Pierce didn't bother, or Eddie Johnson, or guys like that, Dale Ellis. I mean, it, it depends on the player. I mean, he's not a touch player. He's more of a strong arm kind of a guy. Sometimes you just force it a little bit. One more for Winston Smith, who has already exceeded his season average of points per game. Out of Jersey, St. Pat's, Kevin Boyle, his coach. Kevin played for me at Seton Hall, believe it or not. He obviously learned someplace else because he's got a great program. Weeks in the lane, so Bruiser Flint's team only able to shave one off the Fresno lead, which is nine. About halfway through the first half. Watch how they dribble. They leave some. This is their post rush now. But they'll dribble, exchange, and kick back. See this? Kick back. Heron gets through traffic. His lefty layup can't go, and it's knocked out of bounds by UMass. That's what makes him tough, Herman. He made the three. Now he can go to the basket. He's got great strength, 
He jump stops and kicks frequently. Just couldn't get that left hand curled to the goal. That tattoo that you saw on his right shoulder is the Heron family name and the family crest. Good defense by Padilla to knock it away. I don't think my father would like that on me. I think he'd rather me wear it around my neck. What do you think? Hey, sure. I'm a different generation. First pitch of the game for the uh, guard who averages 11 per lead. Back down to seven as UMass, every time Fresno gets it out to eight or nine, brings it back a little bit. Stanley Misbach. That's the one you got to come up with for UMass. Look at this guy release. Confident. Young miss the three. UMass has numbers. Padilla leading. Ah, offensive foul as Herring takes the position. And Padilla knows he should have kicked it to Carmella. I mean, they've got great communication. And I just uh, whispered to him, my fault. Herring offering it up. Mm. Well, it's more than Crest that stopped that. That's good defensive ability and a lot of hard work. Went to BC, played one game, as you've noted, and opted to move west. And I, I really was having a problem finding himself. Went back to Fall River, struggled socially, and finally saw Clark got the job and made the phone. Let's hope Clark does that to the phone. Instead of having to make calls, he was accepting the 40 back in the game, explodes to the goal for two. Clark could be a great marriage counselor. I just made the phone call, he straight Zilly the go. The Houston football coach, Tim Hudson, has a radio show where he counsels folks on their marital problems. Uh -huh. I've, I've heard that. You had it on sports center, I think. It was on the uh, college game day show. Yeah. Listen, the guy. They're out of bounds, and it will stay with the Minutemen. UMass 2-3. and three, They went over to Hawaii, so they've logged their share of miles, as we mentioned, Tarkanian's team on a 10-game road trip. UMass will do 15,000 round-trip miles in the months of November and December. And, Mike, right now, UMass too fast for their own good. They're rushing the offense, not reversing the ball. And Bassett, uh, good post up there as Forney gets a little whack. But can you feel it? It's like they're always in a hurry. And that's partly Fresno's, to their credit, and just get after you and make you do some things you're uncomfortable doing faster than you'd like to do them. Second foul on the youngster, Forney. UMass. Hitting 37 percent of their field goals so far, and field goal shooting in the first half has been a struggle. Kentner establishing himself down low, and that's more than establishing. That's by the block. Good fake with the shoulder, the turnaround jump hook. Well, he, he is the real thing. I, everyone had questions about Larry Kentner, but boy, he looked very good the last couple of games. And the guards are going to him, which proves their confidence level. Big man Smith handled too much, and UMass back the other way. He cut it to a seven. Oh, oh, look for Bassett by Padilla. Uh, right there, and another violation as Forney stepped in. Not a good play. Well, we talk about the guards and what makes you enjoy their play. They just keep coming at you. Edgar Padilla picks their pocket. You got to see the ball. UMass has made it a five-point lead. We're back here in Amherst after a 20-second timeout. You didn't miss a thing except another Fresno foul as UMass has cut the lead to five and Fresno playing a little bit out of sorts right now. And Mike, UMass has an 18-6 on points inside and they have 11 offensive rebounds but only to the foul line once. And this hustle play by Bassett again gives them an opportunity. So Ajmal will go back to the line. He has five points. The big fellas, Kettner and Bassett, 15 points for uh, UMass thus far. Actually, we'll make it 14. If Ajmal gets after it, he is going to be something in a couple of years. He's got foot speed, size, unbelievable. The running of the floor. You just see that Forney not able to get a hand on it, but you never saw the vision on the ball by Fresno as they ran back. And Edgar after that steal with a terrific look. So a lead that has been as big as nine is now down to three. 30 to 27 Fresno as we work toward eight minutes here. First half, Mike Tirico, Bill Raftery, East meeting West. They should go inside against Kettner, I think. Let 40 do some damage, get him number three. It's a different team without Larry in there. Dominic Young tries to blow by Travieso and then pulls up the three. And a foul on Rashawn Smith. 
Buddy, that's a tough shot that Dominic Young just took, that step back jack, but he does make it. Looked at a couple of tapes. And right here, now this is awfully difficult because you can't get the correct balance. You're sometimes coming backwards, but he almost gets it. Morning with a good hustle, but unfortunately, as you mentioned, Rashawn gets tagged. After hitting their first three three-pointers in one of the last five for Fresno, and UMass, after not getting to the free throw line, is now cutting into the lead at the stripe. Bassett back one more time. And like Lindsay doing a nice job, comes in with Norville now, gets Kettner out, saves him, he stole a little play with him, got a deuce out of him. Bassett, very hard worker, as you see. And put up point eight. Bassett has eight. Kettner has eight. The big men up front. He an 8-0 run, and Bruiser Flint's team is within one. You can't have pool parties when I'm on the road. This is what happens. You know what I'm saying? Give me love. Give me a bar. have a regular party but you can't have any more pool parties look at this the filters mess look times fresno's had a nine point lead umass has cut into it and made it a one point game gridiron grapes thursday night they will be honored we'll join tom jackson and joe theisman in orlando at the espn club at walt disney world for the selection of the 96 97 nfl pro bowl players then the home depot college football award show from the disney mgm studios 10 awards given out the maxwell the outland the davy o'brien Jim Thorpe among them, Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet have that at 8.30 Eastern. A man of many hats, Mike Tarico. Got your favorites picked out? Yeah, we'll go down to Orlando. Be interesting to see who the pro bowlers are. An interesting basketball game here thus far. Heron the back to our cut. Boom pending on Norval. Score the goal for Chris. Now, they worked on that yesterday in practice. All the action on the right side. You reverse the ball, step and go. Nice little footstep by Hearn and the ball delivered. Brother, here's the reversal. Step to the ball. Bang. Is Petey Carroll in the building? <laughs> Sark showing a little flair. Back on the other end, Travieso had his shot partially blocked by Roberson. And in transition, Roberson on the run out. And just another faulty trip defensively. The transition not there. Also, the mistakes in an area where you're going to pay for them. Take the half second to take a deep breath and boom, they put up two field goals. They can get some points, but it all stems from this one. It's so impressive. It just stays low. Bassett turned away, shows some poise. Here's Clark for two. That's exactly what they have to do. Dominic Young pushing, turned away. They are a threat. I mean, they get the puppy squared up. They're going to go on you. They're almost disappointed when they don't fire up a shot. But it's like a lot of guys are catching on. Maybe I will talk. But they're ready. Aaron, deep three. And out of bounds. You may think that was a little out of his range, but when he takes his 153 pointers and his 150 jumpers in his daily workout regimen, he can hit him from behind the NBA arc. And once in a while it comes out a little on the side for him, and that one did. And he's straight up and square. I'm looking at Tark, and Danny's over there too, just as vociferous, and they tell me they disagree on different kids who can play. It's only a father and a son. Is that why they don't sit next to each other? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Saves a little uh, difficulty for later. Babel misfire coming right back off the bench. Weeks hustles and keeps it alive. Into the hands of Padilla. Edgar chasing it down in all corners, but couldn't keep that one alive. Do you realize how strong you have to be to hold on to the ball? I mean, they are being attacked. Kettner that time, he had a chance against the normal front line of grabbing and putting it up. Not so against Fresno. Very aggressive. With a little banging in within the rules. They can get everything. UMass has 14 offensive rebounds, but only 11 points to show off those retained possessions. Tough shot. Orton leaning an NBA-type shot where you draw the contact. And I think he got hit, too, by... He has seven, and all of a sudden, three field goals snapped off against Bruiser Flint's team, and the timeout is called. 
uh, Brewers are very popular by that on campus, but the players too, and yet he stepped over that arena of friend as the assistant coach. Buffer. Well, yeah, no, and he's in, and in Maui, I saw him, I and mean, he's challenging, he's demanding. Uh, Little tape yesterday got after them on some things, and it, it's really been a, a tough adjustment in a lot of ways, but handled better by his relationship with the players. See, Fresno has uh, done it from the field, hitting 50% of their field goals, and on Chris Heron's return to Massachusetts, he has 10 of the Bulldogs' 36 points. Coaches talk about that all, all the time, moving over that tough foot and a half from the assistant's chair to the head coach's chair, in large part because of the relationships and stuff? Well, I think it's because you're the one that sort of appeases them. The head coach lays the rules down. But in this case, I think Bruiser has been very strong from the get-go, plus the success. Nice post pass. Kettner is fouled by Rasan Smith, and I think that's three on Smith. And I think uh, Larry may have gotten away with one there, too. He rolled into spot. You can't let him come in this easy, and Tark will be the first when I look at the tape. Let's see if... Uh, yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. Yep, the little hop cost him. Kind of got out of position and had to lean on. Him. Probably got too deep under the glass, but that post pass is faulty defense. Smith checks out with three as Kettner heads back to the line. He averages nine points per game. Set out his freshman year in eligibility academically. That was the question, but came back last year, hit the books hard to uh, earn a spot on the athletic director's honor roll. Over a three-point grade point average. And basketball game now coming around after that year layoff. UMass has not missed in their six free throw attempts tonight. You knew that was going to happen. <laughs> I'm cute. <laughs> I, don't, I almost waited over until the last three shots. Just to be fair. Young shakes Padilla and shoots. You know, he and Tark had a dialogue there as to what was going to be run. Well, I guess Young won out. Huh? Take the deep one. Clark tries to break down his man. Got around one and Kerdenga. Try to step up, but still Charlton Clark threw the foul. Now, you watch enough football. Charlton Clark is a kind of a guy coming through a hole. You're going to really have to get him and nail him. But one thing that Bruce has been after is for him to get to the basket a little bit. A nice little crossover and the strength to ward off. Take the hit a little bit here. And uh, maybe small change, phantom, mirage. They've been All found the half at the top of the key <laughs> as Brooks bumped him on the way down. Clark goes to the line as Bruiser Flint's team gets back in it. Charlton Clark last year broke a bone in his foot in the opener against Kentucky and really spent the freshman year just trying to find playing time with these iron iron horses in the backcourt and never really got the front. A great player at ah. St. Raymond's for Gary DeCesar. And uh, it's tough to be a newcomer stepping in with these two guys. It is a terrific backcourt. Now they got a nice rotation with Clark Hunting back cut by Brooks. Dominic Young works around Padilla, got all the way to the goal. Stanley did pull it away, and the foul, good work by Stanley, too. They give it to Padilla. They may a little reach in. Two on Edgar, Carmelo Travieso has not picked up any fouls, so Travieso will come in. And UMass is going to go three guards here. I, I would think before tonight's over, you'll see them with both teams quite a bit. So Kari Stanley will go to the line. Part-time starter at center last year. And now he's playing because Smith, Hassan, picked up the three early personal fouls. A lane violation, I think, before the release. Big wide body kind of a guy. They said he played well versus Oregon. Physical kind of a kid. They lost that Oregon game, 87-75. And they are not alone. It is not easy to go into Oregon to come away with a road victory. How about this stroke, huh? They, they disallow that one, so now he's six for six. That'll win favor, or curry favor with the coach. But Tark said he felt Oregon dictated everything. That's what they annoyed him about the game. We think they played as hard as they should, but they forced him to play a lot of half court. And as you know, watching this guy over the years at UNLV, they like to... <laughs> they are establishing Kettner often. Tough defense, Trudenga pulls away the rebound. Fresno tries to extend the lead to nine for the third time in this half. Nice job. Padilla nearly forced the turnover, and right back to Stanley. 
Berberson trying to chase it down, and Fresno picks up the foul in what has become a foul-filled first half. Infested, but they do get around the rim. A lot of red shirts attacking the glass, and what UMass is doing is getting shoved underneath, not presenting themselves out far enough, and then stepping to the basketball. Look at all the shirts inside here now. And the ability to get these follows, look, and nobody goes and tags anybody. Strictly schoolyard when you don't do that. Guys rely on their ability, you're going to have some problems defensively. Padilla will have one more at the line. He's hit eight of his nine free throw attempts this year. Kettner goes out. Ajmal Bassett comes back in. Bassett had a good early start. My guys. Another good job getting some minutes without getting that third foul. Tough game for Padilla, who has struggled in the early going shooting 17% in the first half of UMass's first five games this year. Just running the show, he's a valuable guy. Nice use of the brush by Young. Young and Brooks now on the backcourt. Trudenga, will he show some offense and tee up Young for a triple? I see he should have turned around there. Carmelo sniffed the post. You've got to stay at home on that guy. Dominic will drill you. Young has eight. That's the Fresno lead as we push four minutes left in our first half. Three guards, as we mentioned, for UMass Padilla, Travieso, and Charlton Clark. Edgar works on Dominic Young. Nice show here for Denga. Now they got to step up. They got an open jumper. Clark instead takes it in. Ah! Rebound basket for Bassett. Well, he's in the right spot, though. Cleaning up that weak side. Fire out of Ajma. Oh, he's, he's got some spirit. There's the lead. Back to six. Nice front to low post by Ashmont. Stanley set the screen. Young tees up Brooks for a triple. Again, preventing Fresno on the glass. Stanley now has six points. He gets that body, moves people. Kareem, tough on that glass. So Rashawn Smith, the starting center, picks up three personals, goes out. Stanley comes back in and gives him offense. Padilla fouled as he tried to get the jump shot. Dominic Young hit him on the arm. Well, right now, that's twice they've run that high pick and roll. They've gotten something good about it. They got the corner kick to Charlton, who made a tough little shot. Bass and followed. That time they got to the foul line. I will. Michael Jordan stepped through. Second foul on Young. Go away from the three guards as Clark and Weeks will sit down. Tyrone's looked pretty good despite that right ankle sprain. Showing a lot of fortitude, huh? Hanging mm -hmm. tough. Larry Kettner and Mike Babel back in for UMass. So Padilla back at the line. Three for three for him tonight. Well, John Calipari, excuse me, checks in with Bruiser frequently. Find out how the program is going. And Bruiser's become an authority on the Nets as well. <laughs> I was going to mention that you mentioned the adjustment for being an assistant when you have to be that buffer. I was going to say, you didn't need a buffer around when John was here, did you? <laughs> you didn't get after the kids a little. <laughs> Couple of free throws. UMass down six to Dark Team. Creative. But, you know, when it's Michigan, they know what they're going to chant. That's easy. Davidson, they have to work. Well, how about Robert Trailer having a few chance down oh. the stretch? Oh. Was he ferocious on the glass? And in the low post. And you see them tomorrow. Michigan taking on St. John's on Long Island. Gap. Aaron, quick first step. Nice he stays with Fresno. Got to grab it. Good job at creating that pinch and then kick it to the corner. Corny a little out of control. Back out to Heron. Oh, nice. Inside for Darnell McCullough's first two. And Brooks actually had his hand as though he shot it. He thought he was getting it. Great penetration and a fine. Aaron has looked terrific here in his return to the Commonwealth. Ten points. And on the passing end as well, and he takes it away from Padilla. He can get up. Took it all the way, and now 12 points for Chris Harris, right on his average. And they're going to check with Padilla, who got a knee bang on the floor, I think, when he was down. Just an inadvertent turnover, but on the spot, a guy who's found the second life, I think, in basketball. Tark feels he could be one of the great ones, huh? Well, Tark has said could end up being the best guard he's ever coached. 
And he coached a very, very good guard. And then he mentioned to me, Jerry Westman. Come on, come on. I mean, I, I love the kid. Let's see. Let's give a few games, huh? The starting exact quote was, could end up being the best white guard since Jerry West. I guess we had to throw Salt Lake. Just to stop it. Getner bodied in. Turned it up. A little spin, and they work on that now. Referees. Nichols addressing that fact. You see a lot more call both here and in the NBA, yeah. too. Right. A key couple of minutes here for UMass. The deficit is 10. Karen dropped it back to 14. Turned it over, but they get every loose ball back to McCullough. And the foul, and he went down very hard and very awkwardly. Now, this could be an attention. There was a shove from the rear. Just regular fans. Watch, watch Oswald. See him push right there. Now that is dangerous. And that's where he's got to grow and understand. Boy, they ended up banging one another, but uh, Ajmal, lucky it is an intentional. Could be two, plus the ball, maybe a five-point, seven-point play, and it's all done. At a time when UMass is on the ropes a little bit, McCullough fortunate to be okay with that odd twist to the floor. They are scrappy, though, Fresno. I mean, even if it isn't clean, they're getting involved, and being very physical, getting bodies pushed underneath the rim. So four points there as the foul was not related to the shot. The foul was on the man who was pushed. So the two free throws in addition to the hoop. And now it's a 14-point Fresno lead, their biggest of the evening here in the final minute 20. No Padilla on the floor. So Travieso feeling a lot of pressure here. And that's an important trip. They're lucky to get to the line, too. And they reached in. Uh, Fresno, a lot of, a lot of whooping going on now. Ajval and Hurran. Uh, Edgar, the leadership in the second half has to step up from him. I think just calm the offense down a little bit. Now they got to get something out of their D, too. Count these two. Get themselves back in the hunt here. UMass brings Enos Norville in for Larry Kettner. And a backcourt change for Fresno. Dominic Young will come in for Kendrick Brooks. Putting a team together, you feel you've got experience in the backcourt. And it, it hasn't meshed totally for Boozer. But there are some signs. It's just a frenzied attack right now. And also get through this after the end of the game. Only the two fouls. Yo-yoing them back and forth. They just got to get within that 10-point mark. And Fresno will not back the attack at all. They are very aggressive on this end and complemented with great pressure defensively. Well, point lead here in our final minute. You see the scores go by at 28-58 after every hour. Carl up scores and highlights when the final minute winds down here in Massachusetts. Oh, triple for Young. McCullough has been a huge force here the last two minutes. They're not coming up with the loose ones, UMass. Charlton Clark comes up with that one. Hope to get it under 10. Travieso for three. All Fresno two on one. Babel gets back. Pretty. McCullough, the secondary break almost. And the foul. As they continue to get the ball in the paint, all the Fresno shots, unless they're threes from the three gunners, are coming from right down underneath the goal. You know what's interesting? They jump in the air and make passes and get them completed. Most of the teams right. turn it over. Right. And that time, Heron was bailed out by a good run. They get down the floor and complement the initial surge. You mentioned the secondary break. Jack Furtick, a longtime coach, now their administrative guy for Jerry. He's just amazed at the work ethic. And that's one of the features of the team. I think they get down the floor. They complement dribble penetration by moving into holes. Jack was at USC with George Ravley for quite a while at Tennessee with Ray Mears. So one more free throw for McCullough, who averages five a game and is already above that. Shooting for point seven here. Kettner gets the rebound. Second and a half is the difference between the shot clock and the game clock. UMass has a chance to milk it down if they so choose. Down 13 here. This is a UMass team that scores on average 65 a game in the first five games of the year. So this is obviously not their tempo game. And they slide through this time. Everybody stays at home. Nice job by Stanley. Here it comes again. They may trap this late. 
be. And back on the court, got by, teed up Carmelo. Turn a triple. Good snack, got to be ready to play. When he last doesn't get anything, he's going to get a shot. Dominic Young, he thinks that's his range, too. <laughs> he was looking for the pick. <laughs> And that will do it for the first half. Jerry Tarkanian's team puts up a 52-point first half. Chris Herron's return to the state of Massachusetts. A very good return thus far. 12 points. UMass in a 10-point hole as we head to halftime. Bulldogs lead by 10. Now time for the halftime report. Let's go back to Carl Ravage. Carl. Hi, right, Mike. Thanks very much. In unfamiliar territory for the Minutemen and their fans, UMass has yet to lose a non-conference game inside the Mullen Center. They are 12-0 today. They got a 26-game on-campus winning streak, and that is in jeopardy. Coming up on the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report, much to do. Five top 25 teams in action, including number four, Villanova, number 20, Arkansas. And Monster in the backcourt has not only done a good job offensively, led by Chris Herron's 12 points, 